Delighted to have Senator Grassley. Uh, Sarah, it's a little odd. I'm in Iowa and you're in Washington. But I guess we can overcome that, can't we? Uh, we sure can. You're out there in the real America. Washington is an <laughs> island surrounded by reality. And I want to compliment you. In the previous administration, you were on the White House staff. You had so many successful policies compared to the stark failures of the Biden administration. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that, as always, especially coming from you. Um, Senator Grassley, am I wrong? On, there's two issues here. Number one, uh, Build Back Better looks dead to me. And number two, this um, breaking the legislative filibuster and the election bill also looks dead to me. Am I right on yeah. those counts or do you see it differently, sir? I think you're right on Build Back Better. Uh, it's dead from your point of view. I would tell you it's on life support, but either way, I don't expect it to pass. And I think the other uh, articles you brought up, uh, the voting bill and the uh, filibuster, I, I think those are uh, diversions because of the failure of Build Back Better. So you're right. And the most important thing about uh, not uh, changing the rules of the Senate. In fact, you know, it takes two-thirds vote to change the rules of the Senate. But they'll break the rules to uh, change the Senate, to change the rules, because they got a way of doing it with 51 votes instead of two-thirds vote. And uh, if that happens, uh, then uh, every senator in the minority is not going to be protected. And we're not going to have the bipartisanship that when you have to have 60 votes, uh, and Iowans want more bipartisanship. In fact, they're disgusted that we don't have enough of it already. And uh, uh, you, uh, the 60 votes promotes bipartisanship. And the function of the second Senate was to be a deliberative body, not just let the majority uh, run over uh, the, uh, uh, the minority. And some days the Democrats will regret that they were, if they were successful in doing it, which I don't think they'll be successful, but if they were, and they're in the minority a year from now, uh, they'll regret that they did it. And then that voting rights bill that you brought up uh, is not really a voting rights bill. It's to f federalize election laws, do away with the uh, election laws of the 50 states, and it would basically uh, give the uh, uh, lifetime su support for always a Democrat majority and uh, they don't really have a mandate to do what they're trying to do because it's a 50-50 Senate, only a five-vote margin in the United States House of Representatives. So you have a president and a Democrat with slim margins in both. That's not a mandate, but they keep talking about a mandate to change the election laws. And we just had a, a Pew uh, uh, report index out, uh, poll results out, that said of all the things that people are interested in, uh, going on in Washington, D.C., uh, voting rights came out uh, 23rd in a long list yeah. of people of what they're interested in thinking we ought to do. Yeah, you know, um, Senator McConnell has said on, on all this that if the filibuster rule, if the legislative filibuster rule is broken, then Republicans will put everything to a vote that the Democrats want. Uh, they'll put abortion to a vote. They'll put um, taxes to a vote. Uh, they'll put spending measures to a vote. You know, he, he, what's good for the goose could be good for the gander, or what's bad for the goose could be bad for the gander. He'll make Democrats vote on every single issue under the sun, and they'll come to regret that. Yeah, and with, uh, 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 with McConnell saying that the minority can do that, of course, if the Democrats were in the minority, they could do it. But you're going to have the minority running the United States Senate. So being in the majority, setting the agenda, but that's all you can really do is set the agenda. Otherwise, it takes 60 votes to get to finality. Uh, the, the minority would be running the United States Senate and doing it just to slow things down and get nothing uh, done, just to put the other uh, side on record on a lot of tough issues. Um, Senator Grassley, let me ask you this. As former chair of the Senate Finance Committee, and I think you're still the ranking member of it, um, I'm confused about what the, the tax piece might have been for this Build Back Better. 
Uh, I don't know what Ron Wyden has uh, uh, put out. And I just want to ask you, number one, does anybody know what his tax hike provisions were actually going to be? A and number two, Senator Grassley, wouldn't it make sense for the GOP to push to make the Trump tax cuts permanent? Well, it would be the right thing to do. We wouldn't get it done now. Now, maybe in with a majority after the midterm elections, uh, I would think we would want to do that because we've only got two years. Otherwise, a sunset 2025, we only have two years to get it done, and we need to start immediately doing that. And it would also set the framework for the next presidential election in 2024 that we're uh, sincere about uh, keeping the tax policies that have given this country the best economy they ever had up until the virus hit. Uh, and, uh, the, the, you know, I don't have to go into the statistics of the best economy because nobody refutes that, particularly helping uh, women in the workforce, helping uh, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, minorities in the workforce, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and getting poverty down to the lowest level it had ever been at that time. So uh, uh, we ought to be setting that stage now, and hopefully it'll be an uh, issue in this midterm elections, and then a Republican majority will be able to start pushing for that. Because if we went back to pre-2017, it would increase taxes on uh, everybody, uh, 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 particularly middle class and lower middle class people. Uh, let me ask you w one other um I think this week, Senator Ted Cruz's amendment to restore the sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, the Russian Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which um, Biden, I think, gave a gift to Putin by taking the Trump sanctions off. Now, Mr. Cruz wants to restore those sanctions. And, you know, we're in the middle of this dispute with Putin and the Ukraine. It seems like now is a good time to restore them. What's going to happen, do you think? Would the Cruz amendment get through? Will he get Democrats support for it? Well, I'm going to vote for it. Number two, it's coming at an ideal time when we're negotiating with Putin right now on whether or not he's going to invade Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, and he's got problems in Kazakhstan, so that's another reason uh, for proceeding this. Your question to me is if will it pass? Uh, I, it's hard for me to predict that, but I can say this, that if the Democrats that prior to this administration uh, supported sanctions on that pipeline, it would for sure pass by a big margin. Mm. Now, we're, we're, we're understanding that they're getting nervous about it. You know how these diplomats are. They don't want Congress to interfere with their negotiations whatsoever. And so I think that's the pressure Democrats are getting not to go along with it. Yeah, well, a lot of people think we should have already restored those uh, pipeline sanctions. Um, Senator Grassley, just one more. In general, speaking in general, um, in the Build Back Better bill, which is not going to happen, uh, what would the problem be for Iowa, for Iowa farmers, uh, if all this Green New Deal proposals had gone through? How would it affect the economy of Iowa? How would it affect the farmers and ranchers in Iowa? Okay, first of all, part of this Green New Deal is carbon sequestration. Farmers ought to get credit for the last two or three months or last two or three decades to moving ahead of the rest of the country on carbon sequestration. Because when we move to no-till farming, uh, minimum till farming or cover crops, we're already incorporating a lot of uh, sequestering, a lot of carbon. Now, to answer your question, uh, let's just say one part of their new, uh, new Green Deal uh, is to have electric vehicles. Uh, if you went 100 percent to electric vehicles like they want to do by 2035, we'd have 43,000 Iowans lose their jobs in the ethanol business, uh, uh, ethanol industry, 43,000 jobs. The price of corn would go way down. And, we, and that, that affects uh, not just the 2 percent of the people that are farmers, that uh, affects the entire economy of Iowa where they spend their money. And the other thing uh, is uh, that, uh, that beyond uh, just, just uh, the ethanol industry, 
uh, it'll hurt biodiesel to some extent, not quite to the same extent as ethanol. But, but that just gives you one version of the impact that it's going to have if they go to 100% electric vehicles. Hmm. So bad news. Senator Grassley, you're great to come on. And you know I love interviewing you. And I especially love interviewing you when you don't yell at me. It's just terrific stuff. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's, what, it's wonderful to see you, sir. It's wonderful. Yeah. All best, sir. Thanks very much.